What's up, everybody? Old School NYC Gamer back once again here, and we're over at the Last Laugh Art Exhibit in Brooklyn, New York. And what you see over here, people, is some awesome uh, 8-bit artwork here that a friend of mine here was talking about a while back, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about it, and this is the man himself. Hi, how are Adam, you? Adam Shub. AKA I, I was going to say Painter. Shub, but it's Shub. Everyone gets it wrong. It's okay. Okay, Adam, so yeah, so we want to talk a little bit about the uh, artwork that you have sure, here. Sure, So a lot of the stuff that I have, uh, I, I wanted to bring some of my older pieces and some of my newer ones too, just to kind of show the progression of my stuff. So right here is one of my older pieces. I've had this for about three years now, obviously. I think everybody should know this one, the classic first level from Donkey Kong. And underneath that is a newer piece that I have. It's one of my favorite brawlers of all time, it's River City Ransom. And how long, uh, like, did, I know, seeing that there's a lot of work in this piece. Yeah. Uh, exactly how long did it take you to do this one? This one, probably from uh, conceptualizing it and balancing where I want all the elements to be. Uh, three months, maybe, to do that. Three, three or four. Hey, Morgan. So, yeah, I mean, I just noticed, too, because, you know, you would think mm -hmm. that it was done with a paintbrush, but believe it or not, what other technique are you using to do this? A paintbrush. Well, what kind of paintbrush? A small square one that I use, and with acrylic paint. Uh, yeah, because I mean, like, you know, was there any other layering that you had to do for this, or was it just one straight shot the way you did it? Well, certain colors need to be layered more, so they, they layer nicer on the canvas. Uh, usually, the flesh tones, I'll have to do uh, two layers of. And I always like to go back and kind of, um, if, if there's any uh, lines that are, like, layering mistakes, I'll obviously go back and, and fix those. But for the most part, it's, it's the first shot that I do it. Okay. And uh, so what are these, these next two here, especially uh, starting at the bottom right here? Uh, the next two, this one I've had at a lot of shows. This one's about a year old. It's from the title screen from Mega Man 10. So you got Mega Man and Proto Man and Bass. Mm -hmm. and, and above that is... Yeah, and I have to is, step back because <laughs> this thing is literally... I might have to huge. step this far back. How... T how big is this painting that exactly? It, it's, it's three feet by four feet high. Jeez. And, and for, for the one solid canvas piece, that's the biggest one that I've done. I, I did that one probably about two years ago. Wow. Yeah, so everybody that was at a MAGFest 9 in 2011 got to see this for the first time. Wow. Mm -hmm. And, and how, long did this, how long did this painting take you oh exactly? Oh my god, I actually spread this one out over the course of a year. I was working on so many other things, aside from just painting uh, with my real job, I was working a lot of hours then, and I just didn't have time to paint, and I was getting ready for shows, so I just didn't have time to solidly work on this. Wow. So I was here and there, I was working on it. I mean, what was your inspiration to do, especially do this painting, like especially with this, oh, man. having uh, it this, especially this size? Right, well I, I wanted it, I kept like wanting to work bigger and bigger, you know, really push myself, push the limits of, you know, being an artist. And I was like, alright, I gotta do something epic for my next huge piece. And I was juggling what game, what I want to do, and I just kept coming back to Contra. And I kept thinking, like, what is my favorite part of Contra? What's the most, you know, memorable scene? And this boss, I remember, you know, climbing that waterfall, going up and up and up, and it took me forever to beat that level as a kid. And then you get there, and you're like, holy fucking shit, there's this giant alien with spike ball arms spitting fire at you. And even to this day, this is still my favorite scene from any Contra game. I'm a huge Contra nut. So, and this piece means so much to me. It's on so many different levels. And speaking of how Contra was put up by Konami, the next piece here you fe uh, you're featuring, mm -hmm. and a lot of people will know this, especially if you're from the 80s, you should know what the hell this is. Oh, yes. Yeah, actually, uh, Michael, Ch uh, Michael Bay retracted him doing uh, the Ninja Turtles movie, but uh, I was doing this, and I was going to say, these pieces are in direct protest of Michael Bay ruining one of the most cherished franchises of our childhood. But well, this is he's, actually, he's ruining one, one childhood memory one. at a time. Yeah, exactly. Transformers was just... I'm not even going to get started on that. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah. Anyway, man. so these are technically uh, my first Sega pieces. Um, they're from the Genesis version of uh, Turtles in Time, the Hyperzone heist. Ah. 
So, so this is not exactly because you know, from looking at it from uh, from one person's view, mm -hmm. look at it, you think this is the title screen to uh, Ninja Turtles the arcade game. Exactly. That's that's what uh, a lot of people had thought of was the character select screen on there. Actually, these were images that were used along with the credit scroll at the end of the Hyperzone heist. So what I did is I took these and you know I used them as a basis and I redrew a lot of them and I recolored them because. They, they just could look kind of strange when you blew them up. So, and then I added like background colors and I really wanted the whole thing just to work together as you know, one solid unit. Yeah, so like I said, just like looking for, especially with some of the layering detail and shading. Yeah, it might even be difficult to see on video. Like right there, I have one, two, three, four, five, there's six layers of color right there. Kind of looks like the Kool-Aid Man right there if you look at it right there. Yeah, oh, the Kool-Aid yeah. <laughs> The Kool-Aid Man's busting at him. But yeah, so of course now we got, uh, got another uh, classic right up here. Yep, this was one that I wanted to do for a while, and while I was working on the Ninja Turtle pieces, I wanted, I kept, I usually don't tell people but when my newest pieces, but I told people what it was, and people were bugging me, like, oh, where are the turtle pieces, where are they? So, to hold people over in the meantime, I decided to do other green skin characters, so... Why not the Battletoads? Yeah, and how long did, did this uh, one take care of? This one probably took about two weeks to do. Mm -hmm. And of course down here, I'm not going to lie, I kind of know what this is, but I don't. Really? That's I'm not one of the greatest RPGs of all time. That's which I'm not, Trigger. I'm not an RPG fan, I'm oh, not going to lie. Oh no. That's, that's I don't hate it, one. I'm just not into it. Alright, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, this was actually a, a really big challenge to do. Because one, it was done by Squaresoft, and those guys, those artists are absolutely amazing. And this was put out at the end of like, you know, SNES life cycle in 95. So they really knew how to stretch the limitations of the hardware. And in order for me to take that artwork and blow it up and make it into a square painter piece was a really big challenge of changing color around, balancing color, making everything look the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. I actually had somebody to show comment on Luca saying like, oh, I saw that you changed a lot of color in there. And like, yeah, I, I kind of had to yeah. make it look correct. It's almost like, honestly, they're coming out of like uh, like a warp zone. Yeah, well, that's, way, that's... the way it's coming out, it's coming at you. That's what it is. The whole game is based around time travel, and this is like a time like warp rip that opens whenever you travel to a new age. Yeah, and of course I can see a couple of Nintendo classics where you got the original Mega Man, anybody and that, Little Mac. Anybody that's come to one of my shows, especially convention, will know these. I always have a table just full of small paintings here. So I always try to do uh, the more iconic characters from uh, Nintendo and Super Nintendo. And this one right here is... The Slimes from Dragon Warrior, man. Well, I don't have so, that game. Oh, uh, no. Now you could finally catch a Metal Slime. Without him running away, you can have him on your wall. Exactly. And then, of course, Kirby. You and I know Kirby. Yes, that's from uh, Kirby's Adventure on Nintendo. It was from one of the little cutscenes in the beginning before the level. There was one of him, like, relaxing on a lounge. And then I saw this one of him floating with these balloons. And I'm like, oh, that'll look so nice on, like, a light blue. Oh, how'd you get the caricature of me? How'd you do that? I don't know, man. I, <laughs> I know. I, I just I just thought of you wearing red baseball caps and like yellow and blue. Well, you got the color wrong. It's actually a black one. No. Uh, anyway, well, yeah. anyway, so uh, as I've said in other interviews before, Earthbound is my favorite game of all time. I absolutely love Ness. So I, I can't even tell you how many times I've done small paintings of him. Probably fifteen to twenty. And of course, I had to say the last one here. This troublemaker. <laughs> you, you played the game before. A lot of you have played this game. Yeah. So we're we're in a disagreement. You said you, you don't like the Abobo. And no, I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of him. All right. Well, and nor, nor is he a fan of me. No. All right. Well, I don't think he's a fan of anybody. He likes beating you up. But my first experience with a Bobo was I didn't have a Nintendo growing up. I had a Sega Master System, and the version of Double Dragon for that was based way more on the arcade. So, right there in the first level, you're walking along and you're fighting enemies that are your size, and then the wall crumbles in front of you, and this dude who's three times your size, giant muscle bald man, comes out and starts beating the crap out of you. That, that was one of the scariest things for me as a kid. Like, a Bobo was like, I thought he was awesome and scary at the same time. Come on, someone's coming at you like that close. Exactly, with, with those that. fists. With that steroid um, body, what are you gonna do? Exactly. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna run like hell. Exactly. But you didn't in Dragon, in Double Dragon. You stood your ground. Well, I don't know. Some people ran away. I've seen a few people run away, but yeah, you can't right. run. You can't run away from a scrolling screen, you know? No, you can't. Hey, everybody, what's up?
what's up? We're back here over at the Last Laugh Art Exhibit. I'm back here with Adam. So Adam, so you? like I said, you know, even though we did a little bit of what your, your artwork is about, mm -hmm. you know, what made you want to uh, be a part of this art exhibition? Well, this one actually, uh, my really good friend Morgan Lappin, who uh, kind of got me into doing gallery shows. So I really owe him a lot. And uh, you know, we've just been, you know, talking, you know, about you know getting a big art show together. And he's like, oh, I got this really big, you know, gallery space. I want you to be a part of it. All right, why not? Cool. So, like I said, you know, of course, you seem like you love Nintendo. You have a lot of history with eight big games. How far back? I mean, in a nutshell, not to go too long on it, but how would you describe your history with the game and from the start? From the start, uh, I grew up with. I had the Atari Twenty Six Hundred when I was a little kid, and my father worked for Toys R Us as an illustrator, so he used to get all the stuff for free. So he came home one day with an Atari 2600 and just a box full of games. And I was like, Airy, four, Airy, three, four years Airy old. Aries wasn't one of them, was no, it? No. Um, uh, I, I specifically remember Combat being in there, obviously. Uh, Gyrus was one of them. Uh, Tutankhamen, Common, the one where, yeah, Tutankhamen Common was uh, one that I really loved. Obviously, the classics like you know, Missile Command and Asteroid. And all that, and uh, you know the, the shitty version of Pac-Man that's on the, 20, the prototype version, and, and, uh, and it still is to this day. Yeah, no. but I had I had ET on there, and Superman was happened to have those horrible games. So I grew up on that, and then I got a Sega Master System uh, one year for my birthday, and I had that for a while, and then I actually didn't get a Nintendo until like 1988 or 89. It was pretty far along. So all my friends had a Nintendo, and I was the only one with a Master System. Uh, I remember getting it and uh, getting Super Mario 3 like a week after. Dad coming home and he, I just saw the yellow box. And so you Jack knew. And like, oh, I know what that is. And then uh, I kept pretty, pretty current with it. I got, I had a Super Nintendo when that came out, and uh, a year after that I had a Genesis and I had a Sega CD. And I actually really loved the Sega CD. Oh, no, I'm not gonna favorites. lie. I've, I've gotten it recently too. Though. Yeah. It's taken a while to grow on I me. Mean, there's mm -hmm. some amazing shooters. I mean, some will say it, and it is true. A lot of the games are just. Sega, you know, Sega Genesis, yeah, the FMC just, just, stuff. just enhanced mm -hmm. to a certain extent. But there's a couple that were made, you know, just for it. Yeah, Silphy, enough said. Yeah, well, for me, uh, I mean, I'm a huge fan of like the cyberpunk genre. So, Rise of the Dragon and Snatcher, are two of my favorite games of all time. And I personally, I know a lot of people agree with me. Uh, Sonic CD yeah. is no, the best one is. of the Sonic franchise. And I Honestly, love the Sonic games. It's, it's That's one my of, personal it, favorite. That is to me one of the most underrated games. No, it yeah. definitely is, but people who know about it, how amazing like the soundtrack is on there. My parents are here! Oh. <laughs> what are we? Oh, is it, this, is, this is your dad? Yes, this is just happened to show up. This is totally random. This guy right here, I mean, you, you can come inside, don't worry. So, this, this guy right here. This internet, hi, this is, these are, these are my parents. This, this man is my right dad, here. this is my mom. This man right here <laughs> hooked him up with the Atari. Yes, he's the one that I just said brought home the Atari 2600 all the games. This is completely unplanned. I didn't expect you guys to be here. Sydney. Sydney. Hi, Sydney. So, yeah. Uh, so, what a way to break up an interview. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, what a way to do you, that. Years ago. Uh, years ago, <laughs> when I was an illustrator, uh, I did illustrations for the first sports games that came out for Atari. Wow. So I had yeah. the promo games in the house, and I was photographing off the TV screen, essentially doing just what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. Well, well, if you hold on to those, they're pretty freaking rare. Yeah. Yeah, but no, you couldn't. No, you couldn't hold that. Oh. They were pre-release Yeah, games. imagine that. Atari so prototype cards, right? Yeah. They were, uh, they couldn't figure out a way to photograph the games on the TV so it looked good. Yeah. So they had me illustrate it, and they'd scrub it in. Wow, yeah, it's so like, I, you know, I never thought about that, but it's right. like it's like the preliminary to what you're doing. Yeah. 30, oh. 35. Dennis oh, Fernando, what's up? 30, 35 years later. Yeah. Hi. What's up, dude? Good to see you, man. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah, that's why I, I, I can edit this. All right, all right, all right, cool. All right, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see you in a bit. Okay. Yeah, we'll be, in, we'll be in a few minutes. So, after that one, um, I had a Nintendo 64, and I really wish I would have gone with the PlayStation because I ultimately I thought the Nintendo 64 was a flop. There were some really great games. There's there was you. Yeah, there but it's just I don't know. I thought like the graphics were wonky. It was I, I didn't I don't know. I like the PlayStation so much more and I stayed with the PS2 and I have PS3 now, but yeah. Nintendo and Super Nintendo were my heart's at. 
So I mean, besides besides all the eight bit artwork you've done, what what was the very first thing you did? Like the very first video game artwork you could remember? Uh, when I was a kid, I uh, I I loved Mega Man. I grew up with that. I loved all the artwork. I loved the games. And I used to uh, draw out of the old Nintendo powers. I would just copy like all, like the Mega Man three bosses and things like that. And I just learned how to draw, and that. And that's basically how you got start. all your, your art still basically just from, not necessarily from just like real life stuff or comic books mm -hmm. or anything like that per se, but just specifically stuff from Nintendo Power. That's from that's video how, games. That's how you yeah, learn. Nintendo Power, some comics, but yeah, it was it was Nintendo from the start yeah. that. That helped me become an artist. I mean, do you feel like, in a way, though, you, you're kind of a niche? Because I just, I personally never really see any mm -hmm. quote unquote video game artists mm -hmm. doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, not necessarily, you know, they're doing, uh, for example, you know, doing box artwork, right. stuff like that. But I'm talking about what you're doing. I personally never seen it up mm -hmm. until now. I mean, are there other artists? Yeah, there's there's other artists. artists I've done about? I've done shows with other artists that have done uh, pixel paintings of what I do. And uh, I stay friendly and I stay in contact with uh, a whole bunch of other pixel artists. I get uh, you know, a lot of them contact me, which is pretty cool. But uh, I always try to just you know keep my artwork you know uh, on a certain level for where I want to keep it. Like you know I like to do really big murals. I like to work huge. I, I want to just have a wow factor with my paintings. You know I want to create something that one that I'm happy with, and that when someone that really sees it resonates with them, it really resonates with them. So like I said, so you know, in closing, like, what do you have to say to the viewers out there? You know, just want to. You know, give, give a plug to your artwork. Uh, website, sure. Contact information. Sure. Well, my name is Adam, aka Square Painter. You can look me up on DeviantArt, SquarePainter.DeviantArt.com, or my Square Painter page on Facebook. And I'm also affiliated with my good friends over at Screw Attack, so ScrewAttack.com. I have a whole section on there. And uh, I was wondering if you could just. But anyway, and anyway, anyway, has to have something delivered, apparently. Exactly. Right. Yeah, but anyway, people, we'll leave all the information down, down at the bottom there. So if you want to contact Adam. Feel free to do so. You know, yeah, definitely you gotta check out his artwork. Yeah, He's got tons more stuff that he didn't have here, or you know, you want to commission him to do something. You know, you can hit him up, do something there. That'd That's for other people. So like I said, definitely uh, check his stuff out. Check me out on Facebook and Twitter, people. That's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to leave a comment, and that's about it. Have a good night, everybody. Cheers.